The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Matthew 4, 16 and Isaiah 9, 1 through 2. In January 1994, an earthquake lasting 15 seconds hit Los Angeles, California, causing nearly $20 billion in damages and the deaths of 57 people. Power was lost for large sections of the city. Radio and television were unable to broadcast. Seven major freeway bridges collapsed while over 90,000 buildings and structures were damaged or destroyed. But that night, it wasn't the ground that brought so much panic to the people of Los Angeles. Because you see, as the sun set and darkness fell over the city, the Griffith Observatory began receiving phone calls from frightened and terrified citizens who were seeing a very strange sky. They reported that the sky had a silver cloud. Many of them believed this strange silver cloud was caused by the earthquake. The director was confused about what they were talking about until he looked for himself up to the sky. And there he saw something that he was very familiar with, but realized that this silver sky was unfamiliar to those in the city who were making the call. He also realized the people's assumption that the earthquake as the cause was partially correct. Since most of the city's power had been lost, the lights of the city were also lost. And without these human-produced lights shining in the city, people were actually seeing the Milky Way for the very first time. Today, two-thirds of the United States population and one-fifth of the world can't see it due to light pollution emanating from city man-made produced light. All of this got me thinking. How often do we miss God's handiwork because we are blinded by the works of our own hands, our own efforts, and our own ways. And the realization of God's constant light, existence, and power become lost memories by those who once depended upon Him. For younger generations who grow up under such human brightness, there's even less awareness of God's presence and light. It's no wonder that when the world's power fails, and it always does, the sudden sight of God's light can be frightening and even alarming. When the light pollution of our own sin fails, the great light of God's purity can be frightening. Do you remember the transfiguration? But praise be to God for His Son Jesus through whom this great light shines. He gives forgiveness and assures peace with God. And the gift of the Holy Spirit brings us into the light and helps us to walk according to this great light. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, in this season of Advent, we recognize our world in darkness. And as we look up, it's through the darkness that we see your incredible light. A light that shone in the sky above the shepherds, through the glory and brilliance of heaven in your angelic choir, announcing the birth and the arrival of you coming into this dark place. You told us that you were the light of the world, a light that no darkness can extinguish. Your disciples saw the brightness of your glory at the transfiguration. We again look forward to knowing the glory of heaven that is still ahead. But would you continually remind us that though we may be producing some of our own good works, may we never lose sight of the true light and the true glory that comes from you. Be with us now, in Jesus' name, amen.